Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great privilege to be here with you this afternoon and um, to perhaps talk on the topic from the elder's point of view. And elder's point of view is not as a producer, not as a regulator, but really as, uh, as our tradition has been as an old-fashioned stock and station agent. Um, and as you're aware, I think most of you were an iconic part of Australian agriculture. We've been around for nearly 175 years, and livestock has been part and parcel of, um, of that uh, history right across Australia. Um, I, I often tell little anecdotes about elders, and if I can, with just a couple of moments to, 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 to fill in on the way through. It was elders, one of the elders brothers, Thomas Elders, that actually in, introduced the, uh, the camels to Australia to, to open up the outback. And not many of you will know this, but in fact that the size of the wool bale, the international size of a wool bale, was determined here in Australia by the weight that a camel could carry. And it was determined that a camel could carry two wool bales, and that was how the size was actually determined on the way through. And of course, the great Afghan biscuit, we claim credit for that on the way through as well. Um, we touch livestock in almost every part of Australia. We touch almost every producer and have done at one stage or another, every feedlot, every sale yard, we're a live exporter, every meat processor across the country. With our 250 odd branches, um, we deal with uh, something in the order of about 75 sale yards on a weekly or fortnightly basis and the 30 odd major abattoirs that still exist in, in Australia. On an average year, we're responsible for trading uh, sheep to the extent of probably nine to 10 million sheep get traded through our books, two million head of cattle. About last year, 175,000 head of cattle went out in live export, and we run feedlots where we're running on average anything up to 40,000 head. So we actually have a fairly significant uh, part to pay in the, the, live, in the uh, livestock business here in Australia. We act not only as an agent, in other words, selling, buying and selling on behalf of others, but also as a principal in our own right. So we buy and sell livestock ourselves on the way through. Animal welfare, together with humane and considerate treatment of animals, is fundamental to our business. Okay? Um, and the way I always view it, when you see so many of our clients have multiple generations that have worked on properties, when you grow up with animals, you have the right attitude towards uh, animals on the way through. And most of our folk that work in our business come from some form of rural background in one shape, form or another. The outcome that we achieve around livestock is a mixture of values, a mixture of the culture that is created within the, the company, within the policies and, and the processes that we follow. And that's really trying to take a very holistic view on the way through. Uh, because in reality, it doesn't matter how much policy that you put in place, how many procedures you put in place, unless you have the right values in your people and you create the right culture so that people will follow, you won't actually end up with the right outcome at the end of the day. In terms of our network operations, and, and we divide our business really into the trading businesses, which covers the live export trade and our feedlots, but in terms of our network businesses, really around what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of sale yards, <coughs> working with the, the, our clients in terms of uh, dispatching and, and receiving livestock in terms of selling directly into processes, selling directly into feedlots to the live export, and obviously in transporting livestock around the country in one shape, form or another. I suppose <coughs> the basis of that is really around the, the principles of fit to load, around the uh, Australian animal welfare standards that are in place, and again, creating that culture around people who take responsibility for what they do and ensuring that those people are both competent and well-trained in everything that we do. Elders as an organisation continues to invest in the industry and invest in the people. Uh, we have a very uh, successful and ongoing traineeship program in terms of bringing people into to the industry. Uh, and we spend a lot of time and effort in training those people to make sure that we have the right standards within the organisation right across the board. 
In terms of the international operations, we've heard a little bit about SCAS uh, as we've gone through today, and of course it's, a, it's a, an abbreviation we knew nothing about two years ago. But it is around okay, making sure of the existence and the measurement of the international, uh, internationally accepted uh, animal welfare standards that Michael talked about so before and in which Australia actually plays a leading role. It's around the traceability okay, of animals and in respect of individual animals right the way through the process. It's around having the formal contractual control over the supply chain, which is really important, and the presentation of the independent audits that actually go with that on the way through. Um, that means inside our organisation we actually have about 100 supply chains that we actually have to manage. Uh, they go into Indonesia, Israel and Japan. That involves about 13 customers, about 38 feedlots and about 58 abattoirs. So there's those variations as to where the animals go on the way through. The live export standards that we operate cover, of course, sourcing and on-farm preparation of the animals before transport, the, the land transport of those uh, animals to a point of dis dispatch, management of livestock and registered premises, in other words, in the quarantine facilities generally prior to export, vessel preparation and loading, onboard management of livestock on the way through, and of course the air transport um, of, of an animals as well. And we do certainly uh, involve, it's uh, still involved in the, the air transport of animals into certain markets. It's the most economical and commercial way of that actually happening. So we have, uh, over the last year, there's been about 100,000 animals under our care go into Indonesia. Okay, uh, of that, regretfully, there has been 13 deaths. Okay, uh, and, but it brings it into perspective how what a relatively small number that is. And in terms of the long haul, which is the reader markets, our fatality rate is 0.33% of 1%. So again, a relatively low number. But I think all of us would agree that if we could reduce both of those numbers to zero, we would all be very, very happy from both an ethical and a commercial point of view. In terms of what is our outtake on, on SCAS, okay, um, I think the industry as a whole is actually very, very supportive of SCAS and its objectives. Okay? Um, and I know for a fact that the DAF and ALEC, which is the industry body, are meeting for a, a full day consultation and workshop on, I think it is the 3rd of April, where they look to refine it from there. Um, it does involve significant investment on part of live exporters, and that is not only an upfront investment, but obviously an ongoing investment. Every new supply chain needs to be registered and, and managed on an appropriate way. The implementation of SCAS is hardly something that we as a trading partner with our, our near and far neighbours can be proud about, and, and it has certainly damaged uh, Australia's trading reputation in a number of places, and we talk about sovereign risk in other countries, but the sovereign risk and the damage to, to that in for Australia in the way the Indonesian ban was put in place, it cannot be discounted. SCAS by definition at the moment is, is punitive, okay? Uh, it punishes, punishes poor performance, but in no way rewards excellence on the way through. Certainly, Elders has worked very, very hard to exceed all the standards in terms of things, in terms of, uh, for example, the amount of fodder carried on ships from exporting out of different markets in terms of carrying Australian fodder, in terms of quarantine periods that we use, in terms of um, the staff that carried the training of the staff, the vets that are put onto the ships, and, and in terms of putting animal welfare officers on the ground at both ends on the way through. So certainly we have been trying to build, okay, within our organisation a much higher level of performance than is demanded by SCAS, but at the end of the day there's no commercial reward for that. And one needs to be fearful of the minor uh, non-compliance issues that can have wide-ranging uh, implications. So <clears throat> to give you an example, um, recently in Indonesia we had a small truck leave, a, um, leave a, a feedlot to take six cattle to an abattoir. Three of the, capital three of the cattle were Indonesian uh, bred and three were Australian bred. 
The truck was hijacked by a group of armed men. The, the driver was stripped, pistol whipped and tied to a, a tree and the, the cattle truck was duly dispatched and stolen. The truck was re retrieved. Most of the, the people involved were actually arrested. The driver uh, survived and all the rest of it, but the cap cattle were never retrieved, which of course produces a breach within SCAS because we don't have total control over the cattle all the way through. And that in its own right creates a significant amount of administrative burden and I'm not sure that there is any way that any regulation is ever going to cope with that form of non-compliance on the way through. In terms of uh, just our conclusions around the, the animal welfare question, we have and always will to continue to place animal welfare and the welfare at the forefront of both domestic and our international operations. It's part and parcel of everything we do. Okay? It's not only the right thing to do ethically, but it's the right thing to do commercially, and that's what our business has been built on over 175 years. SCAS, it's well intended, it has industry support, but it needs refinement and improvement. And I think that the industry and, and DAF can work uh, together cooperatively to, to achieve that. Okay? Our international trading relationships because of SCAS and the way it's been implemented need some significant work, which we as an exporter don't see happening. And elders as an organization will continue to lead by example. Thank you.